Hello, everybody. So, I guess our attempt at having an in-person class failed. Um, but at least this time, we will try again. OK, so this is what uh, I have prepared for the first uh, lecture. So what I'm going to talk about is not very different from um, traditional hydrostatic equilibrium. So we're going to focus on the equilibrium of a sphere and this sphere is going to be it could be any fluid uh, does this represent a star um yeah you know pretty much uh, stars are spherical and their components you know plasma um it it, it can be represented as uh, as a fluid and are they in equilibrium? Well, they have to be because they are not collapsing and they are not uh, expanding or exploding. So, you know, to a first approximation, they are in, um, in equilibrium. So, we know that gravity is always present and is the only force that we're going to call by name. Uh, in this in this lecture, so consider a thin spherical shell. So it's kind of like this, and we can make it a little thicker. So the mass of this shell is M. Uh, the radius of this shell is R. The thickness of this shell is going to be dr. So we know that rho, the density, is total mass of this shell, we should call it total mass, divided by the volume of the shell. So, of course, this means that the mass is rho times the volume. What is the volume of this shell? Well, uh, we can think about it. It's not a, a square, but it has some um, surface area. That surface area is going to be 4 pi r squared, so the surface area of a sphere. And the thickness is the R. So that's the volume. Right. And so for now, you know, this uh, row is uh, is uniform. So the shell is going to be attracted, and you know this is um, exaggerated, of course, to the rest of the mass inside. 
Right, so in reality, these two are um, together. You're just peeling a very thin sheet of mass. And that thin sheet of mass with thickness dr is um, attracted to the rest of the mass inside. So what is the gravitational force felt by the shell due to the mass that it is uh, enclosing? Uh -huh. Force of gravity, we know it from uh, Newton. So it's G, mass of the shell, mass of the core, let's call this the core. And um, divided by r squared. So we know that we know that uh, this force is going to be towards the center of the core, so um, it's negative. And we know uh, the mass of the shell is given by this, so you can put it in there, 4 pi rho r squared dr. And we can put the mass of the core as, as well, uh, divided by r squared. So this r squared goes away, and this one goes away also. So mm, you can just remove them. This row in general is going to be a function of the radius. And this mass, mass of the core, um, is also going to be a function of the radius. So the larger the radius, the more mass the core is uh, enclosing. So this is a pretty uh, basic equation. Uh, it's, uh, it's very general um, also. So do I have space over here? So the mass enclosed uh, by the, the core is given by the integral from zero to r of, uh, well, we can put the four pi outside since we know it's a constant. Um, four pi integral from zero to r, r square rho of r dr. So this is um, r prime, so that is different from, than uh, from this r that you're evaluating to. So We have the, the density, the density function. And because it is a volume, we have the R squared over here. And this has another component that is linear, so you get your, your cube. We'll see that um, later. OK, so you know, essentially, this is Like uh, like an onion with infinitesimally small 
layers. So, I'm going to get rid of these. Um, because I want a little bit more space. But M of R is that so this is uh, the integral form if you want to leave it as a derivative then the derivative of the mass which is a function of the radius it's going to be um, and with respect to to r is going to be 4 pi R square rho uh, of R plus some constant. So the boundary condition that we're going to use is that the mass at zero, so the mass at the center of the sphere is zero. So you don't have any mass at the very center, and then as you move out, um, you start enclosing more and more and more mass. Okay, so this is an important um, this is an important equation that we're going to use later quite a bit. Okay, so we know that this body is in equilibrium. So we can draw a free body diagram at, at each point. Right, so let's say that the center of the sphere is over here. Yeah, this is not necessarily the surface, this is just any point. So we have a uh, force of gravity over here. And the sum of forces in R has to be zero because this is in equilibrium. So we have minus force gravity and plus some other force that we're going to call buoyant. Uh, so you know if it's a liquid, then obviously it's a buoyant force. Uh, sorry, a, a fluid. Um, but even if it's not a fluid, you know, it, it, there's going to be a, a force that is supporting um, to the, the weight of all the, the layers that are above it, above a particular point. And they perfectly uh, cancel out if they are in equilibrium. So we're going to. We're going to go back to um, uh, this diagram. Uh, this is a very small component uh, that is on top of this sphere, or it's, it's, a, it's a point um, in a concentric sphere over here. 
So we know that this is dr. We know that this is an area. And we see that this buoyant force is up, it's going up. That means that um, the force down here has to be greater than the force up here. So remember that a pressure, the definition of pressure is just force divided by area. That means that force is equal to pressure times area. So the force over here, you know, B for buoyant, um, at some point R has to be greater than the same buoyant force at R plus dr, which will be this point over here. Okay. So we can write these in terms of the pressure. So A times the pressure at R minus the pressure at R plus dr. Is equal to the net uh, buoyant force. So we know that the area of the whole sphere is 4 pi r squared so this is going to be equal to four pi r squared times so this pr goes away with this pr and so it's just minus P of dr. So the P, the pressure of uh, dr is equal to the uh, P. which is a function of R. Um, times the DR over here. And again, this is um, a general result. We are not saying anything about the origin of this uh, buoyant force. 
All right. So now we can, we know what the gravity is as well. We had it before. So sum of forces um, along the radius is minus four pi g rho, which is a function of r, m, which is a function of r, dr. Then we have this negative over here. 4 pi r square dp, which is a function of r dr. And we know that the net force is zero. So 4 pi r squared dp of r dr. equal to minus 4 pi g rho of r m of r. So we can get rid of the 4 pi's. Uh, we can get rid of the dr's. This one over there. Missing at the R over here. Sorry, this is DP DR. Otherwise, I'm just um, adding another one in there. So now this is correct. So dp, which is a function of r over dr, minus g m of r rho of r over r squared. All right. So this equation is important, so it deserves a box. This is the fundamental equation of 
hydrostatic equilibrium. So if you're looking at uh, the Weinberg um, lectures on astrophysics book, this is Weinberg 1.1.4. Equation 1.1.4. So how general is this equation? Quite, because the um, buoyant force can be produced by, uh, by anything, as I mentioned before. So it could be a nuclear reaction, or it could be the Pauli exclusion principle in uh, white dwarfs and neutron stars, uh, it could be a fluid, you know, like if you have a um, ocean planet, for example, or a gas giant. So it is, it is pretty general, you can use it um, for everything. So um, keeping it in sight, let's analyze it with a quick example. Let the density you know, be just constant. So then M of R, we can take the rho out of the integral and we just have R square dr. This is just that. So you know that this is the volume of a sphere. And we know that rho is mass, total mass over total volume. So we can cancel out the volumes, and so then the mass is just a total mass if the density is constant. Well, up to R. Okay, so then we can put it in here, in this equation. So we're going to get that dp dr as a function of R. minus g m rho divided by r squared. And, you know, if you remember this equation, force equals ma, well, let a be the acceleration due to gravity, and this is um, general gravitation, I mean, uh, Newtonian gravitation. Okay, 
can, you can get rid of uh, this m and this m, and you get that the acceleration due to gravity uh, is you know, at point R is just given by G, M, and R squared, uh, which is what we have over here. So we can just say that if the density is constant, then the derivative of the pressure with respect to the radius is just g. But remember that g depends on where you are. So if you go to the Himalayas, it's going to be a little lower because r is larger than if you are you know, at sea level. So g is a function of r. But um, you can just leave it as, as this, and it looks pretty, um, pretty simple. So, what is um, interesting about this equation is that it shows you that hydrostatic equilibrium occurs not because of the pressure, but because you have a pressure gradient. So it's, uh, it's good to know. OK, so um, this is a really good formula equation, but yeah, we'll, we'll use it later. So then the pressure is just the integral uh, of dp, which is going to be minus g m rho integral from 0 to r of r prime squared dr prime. So this is just um, this is negative one over r square. So negative goes away. So it's two g m rho over r. The pressure. So now we can plot it, see how it looks like. Again, this is just for uh, constant intensity. The pressure is just inversely proportional to R. So, you know, in principle, or just based on this, um, as R becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, the pressure has to increase more and more and more and more. And at very large R, the pressure uh, decreases. So at some point, you know, it just becomes zero. Uh, in reality, this one is going to be finite. And this one, you know, at some point you say, well, the star ends or the body ends. So it's zero um, after that. But pressure you know, is always decreasing um, with increasing radius. And that derivative
it's going to look. Mm -hmm. So that one has the R squared. So, you know, kind of um, negative infinite. Because it goes from infinity to some number. Um, at R close to zero. And for a large R, for a large radius, the derivative is just zero. So it, it ends. So, OK, this is, this is um, good to know. So now let's try to get the pressure at the center, but not assuming that the density is constant. So we're going to be using, so I'm going to leave them up here. The derivative of the pressure with respect to R is minus G M, which is a function of R rho which is a function of r over r squared. And we're also going to use uh, the other one that I mentioned before. So this one is the conservation of mass. The derivative of the mass, which is a function of r, with respect to r, is 4 pi R squared rho, which is a function of R. Okay, so we have um, our two equations. We're going to do some um, some cool magic over here. So consider this equation. This is the derivative with respect to R of rho of r plus g m squared r over 8 pi r fourth. And so you might ask, um, where is this coming from? Well, it is just well calibrated. You will see it. You will see why it is useful. So we can um, rewrite this. This is just that derivative. That's the derivative with respect to R. Uh, R to the negative four, so this one over here. M square of R. Looks like a V. And I ran out of space, um, but there's this g 8 pi. Mm. Let's see, maybe I can put it. g 8 pi. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So, Let u be r to the negative four. V it's going to be m squared, which is a function 
of R. So with the product rule, the derivative with respect to the radius of UV, which is what we have over there. Well, this U dV dr plus V du dr. So R to the negative four derivative of m squared, which is a function of r, dr plus m squared, which is a function of r, derivative of r negative four, dr. So this one, you can rewrite it as one over r to the four derivative with respect to r of m, which is a function of r times m, which is a function R. And this one is going to be minus four Yep, minus four m squared, which is a function of r, this is um, r to the negative five, so one over r to the fifth. Cool. So now I have to start over up here. I don't want to get rid of these ones. But I'll get rid of this one. So I'm going to use product rule again. Let you be M of R and V is also M of R. So with product rule, we get that the derivative with respect to R of m squared, which is a function of r, is 2 m, which is a function of r, derivative of m, which is a function of r, with respect to r. Right? So,
So this part, Plus one over R squared plus um, derivative with respect to R of R to the negative uh, four M squared R. Then we had the G over eight pi, that was multiplying everything. So this is equal to g over eight pi, which is multiplying everything. Then we have Minus four M squared R R to the fifth, which is this one over here. And this one uh, is this over here. So it's plus two M R just m prime of r and this one has the r to four okay hmm. it was not super easy to do on the board so check out my notes Okay, so uh, we have the whole thing over there. Yes, okay. So now We know this one, dp of r with respect to r. Uh, we have it up here. So it's minus g m of r rho of r over r squared. we have this one too. So 
we can get rid of this aid. So this will be this will become a two, and this will become a four. And all the pi is still out there. So this is minus. that um, oh, times that g plus g m r m prime r divided by 4 pi r 4. Okay, so we're almost there. Can you still see that? Yes. So, I need a different color. If I can find it. This guy over here right, is G M of R derivative of M, which is function of R with respect to R divided by four pi R squared. So we have dm of r dr up here. So we can replace it. Four pi r square rho of r. And then we can get rid of d squared. This becomes a squared. We can get rid of the four pi's also. And, you know, let's rewrite this. Good. So this guy is equal to this, and this is equal to this. And so that's why we use this form, the gm squared um, function of r over 8 pi r 4. So this one has a negative, and this one has a positive. So what we can say is that So this is always 
um, positive, like the M, the R, but it has the negative in there. So, that means is that um, we can get this inequality. So this derivative is always uh, less than or equal uh, to zero. So let's continue with this. Let rho be a constant. And non zero. Close to the center. And this makes sense, you know, the density is um, mass over volume. Um, in most bodies, except for perhaps for uh, black holes, is going to be non-zero. It's not going to be infinite. And so let's just assume that as it is approaching the center of your sphere, rho is a constant. So we know that dm, which is a function of r over dr, is 4 pi r squared rho, which is a function of r. So we can integrate this to get Get that one, and we know this is we did it before. It's is that so if it's close to the center as. R goes to zero. We can see that mass is proportional to R cubed. So in our other equation, this one. Uh, we have this term m squared over r6. So close to the center, this goes as r to the 6. And this is r to the 4th. So as r goes to zero, this term also goes to zero. So it vanishes at r goes to zero. 
So why is that important? Well, we have another condition at R equals R, capital R. So at the end of the sphere, the pressure has to be zero. So we have a few conditions here. The derivative with respect to R uh, of P of capital R is zero and um, this one goes to zero as R small r goes to zero. That means that the pressure at zero has to be greater than or at least be equal to gm squared over r fourth um, over eight pi. So this is a cool discontinuity because it allows us to calculate the minimum uh, pressure at the center of any body. So I got a few values. For the sun. Earth and a neutron star. So mass radius, the P zero that we can calculate and measure one, or not measure because you cannot measure these ones. So your best known value. So the mass of the sun, 1.98 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. The radius, 6.95 times 10 to the 8 kilograms. So using this um, inequality, uh, pressure at the center of the sun has to be at least uh, 4.4 times 10 to the 4 gigapascals. And based on values from the internet that I found, um, some value in the literature cited 2.5 times 10 to the 7 gigapascals. So, yep, our pressure is greater then um, the pressure is greater than what we calculated. This is to the fourth, this is to the seventh. So the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And the radius of the Earth, uh, this should be meters, sorry. Uh, 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. So using this equation, I get um, 3 point, essentially 4 um, times 10 to the 1. GPA, so 40 GPA. 
and it is estimated that the pressure at the center of the Earth is 390 GPA. You know, so for the Sun, it was off by three orders of magnitude. Uh, for the Earth, it was off by one order of magnitude. For the neutron star, the mass is 1.4 solar masses, so 1.4 times this. Radius, about 10 kilometers. So the pressure should be at least 2 times 10 to the 24 uh, GPA. And some value that I found on Wikipedia said 1.6 times 10 to the 25th. So, you know, also an order of magnitude off. Um, but even though the orders of magnitude might be off a little, uh, it is always smaller than uh, the measured value. So it keeps you the minimum value over there. All right, so that's what I had for this lecture. And you know, hopefully we can have the next one live. All right, thank you.